Keep Calm and Carry Online, Creating an X-Factor Experience for Students by Tom Worthington. I have been teaching working computer professionals and university students online for 10 years. Even so teaching from my lounge room for the last 18 months due to COVID-19 has not been easy. Here I provide some tips and tricks which helped me though. I hope to get academics out of the mindset that online learning is a second best temporary measure. This will be key to learning after the pandemic and will decide if Australian universities have a future. Creating an X-Factor experience for students with the sage on the stage and many guides on the side. X-Factor for student satisfaction. Gary Martin, Chief Executive Officer of the Australian Institute of Management WA, recently asked what gave a quality experience for Australian university students. After scrambling to quickly deliver online courses, universities around the world are asking, what next? Do they return to pre-COVID campus-based teaching, provide online courses alongside campus ones, blended learning which has some online and some face-to-face -face elements, or hybrid with classroom linked online? As someone who was trained to teach online and spent seven years as an online student, I suggest students will expect courses to be available online as a matter of routine. However, they will also expect to have the option of face-to-face -face classes, where they can work with others, under the guidance of experts. What will distinguish a university is the quality of interaction provided, with students and staff. As an online student I found I could manage to study by following the materials provided, doing the readings and exercises. However, it was a very lonely, frustrating experience. What stood out were the occasions when I met and worked virtually with my fellow students. Events with instructors were a highlight. The very rare occasions when I met my instructors were a bonus, as they were on the other side of the Pacific Ocean, 17,000 kilometers away. The Sage on the Stage. Professor Steve Blackburn and the team at the Australian National University College of Engineering and Computer Science have shown the X Factor, in the video, Teaching Computer Science in a Pandemic. I suggest, as the video demonstrates, student satisfaction can be improved though personal attention, enhanced with technology. Steve is a distinguished academic, who is also a good communicator, making him a sage on the stage. Steve can present and discuss material in a way which engages the audience. However, he makes it look deceptively easy. Presenting a good lecture to a room full of students is difficult. Projecting your personality to students online is even harder. Doing both at the same time is very difficult. Not everyone will be able to reach Steve's level, but these are skills which can be learned and practiced. In the video, Teaching Computer Science in a Pandemic, Professor Blackburn emphasizes the role of tutors. Called, teaching assistants, in North America, they are critical. While the professor takes center stage, the tutors work with smaller groups of students, assisting in lectures, in tutorials, workshops and laboratories, to guide students investigating topics and practice skills. Here again, tutoring is a skill which takes training and practice, with an extra layer of complexity when carried out online. Backing up the professor and tutors are many other staff. Producing courses, especially online ones, requires educational designers, video makers, and other specialists. Learning designers work with the subject matter experts to structure the learning and assessment, while video makers polish the recorded presentations. The Australian National University has a Centre for Learning and Teaching, headed by Dr Kim Blackmore, to support staff in the colleges. These staff have been busy during the pandemic, with a crash program to move courses online. But they are always busy, so if you need help, give them plenty of notice. Both classroom-based and online learning also require technical support personnel to keep the audio-visual systems, software and networks working. The last decade has seen new software to deliver learning. When working properly, and used as intended, these systems lighten the burden for students and teachers. Tool Up the COVID-19 pandemic has shown that we need to be ready to deliver learning from and to anywhere at any time. 
As a IT professional at the Defense Department, I was equipped to work from anywhere at any time. As a technology teacher, I routinely carry everything I need to teach in my briefcase. Here is a photo of my home office, upgraded with second-hand equipment for lockdown teaching. I made a point of using low-cost equipment within the reach of the students. There is no point in creating learning materials in a format students can receive. Over the last 18 months, we have seen heroic efforts to rapidly convert campus-based classroom courses for online delivery. Now there is discussion of a return to the classroom. But do we abandon online learning completely? I suggest we can support both, and let the students select their preferred mix. One approach is by Hapke, Lee Post, and Dean, 2020, with their three-in-one hybrid learning. Rather than divide students into distance and campus groups, the students all receive the same online course, supplemented with synchronous hybrid events. For these events students can either be in the classroom or online. The hybrid approach, where the instructor has some students in the room, and some online at the same time, is more difficult to manage. However, it does provide the lecturer with the opportunity to still be the sage on the stage. The student has the sense of getting a university experience. But how do you learn to teach online, and how can they really understand what this is like for the student? I suggest you learn online teaching, by becoming an online student, of teaching. You don't know how frustratingly hard it is, until you try it. Enroll in an online course in how to teach. It has to have deadlines, and assessment, to make the experience real. If you find study frustrating, conflicting with family and work commitments, then you know what it is like for your students. Start with something easy, like the Australian National University Coffee Courses, work up to an international online graduate course. Build the course around the assessment. Students worry about assessment, so tell them what it is, and how each learning activity you have supports it. Delete activities, readings and materials which don't support an assessment. Have small assessment tasks every week to keep the students engaged. 1% or 2% a week will do. Provide results with feedback each week. Unfortunately, many university academics are fixated with lectures, believing that standing up, talking, to a room full of students, is the ultimate form of education, it is not. Drop activities where you are doing all the talking, so there is more time for students to do activities, and talk. There have been decades of research, and development, put into online learning tools and techniques. Use these to save you time. Use the learning management system, to lighten the administrative burden, by using it to distribute materials, send out announcements and administer assessment. Use automated quizzes, rubrics, peer assessment, and other techniques to lighten the burden for you and increase student learning. Do not use email to communicate with students. Use the tools in the learning management system. If a student sends you an email, reply via the system with a copy of their message so they understand this is official, on the record, communication. To forestall other students asking the same question, send an de-identified version of the reply to the class forum. Use video sparingly. High production quality video is not needed for education. In fact, video is not needed. Text is fine. If you already have video, use it. If you have slide decks, turn them into videos. Link the videos from your text notes. Instead of an hour-long video lecture, create a 10-minute summary. Focus your efforts on getting students to do things, not watch videos. Follow accessibility guidelines, not just to make your materials readable by someone with a disability, but so it will work on a smartphone or a slow internet connection. Universities have teams of learning and educational technology professionals to help you do your job. Also, teaching online can be a 24-hour job, so it helps to do it as a team. Synchronous online teaching is technically, and pedagogically, challenging, as well as being tiring. So have at least a two-person tag team. One person presents, while the other checks for questions and problems. 
An example of team teaching are the hybrid workshops for the Australian National University Tech Launcher Program. Workshops are provided each semester for computer project students to help them prepare a capstone reflective portfolio. The workshops were designed to be delivered in a classroom, supported by asynchronous activities and materials delivered using a learning management system, as described in a published paper, Worthington, 2019. In 2019, provision for fully online delivery was included, in case an emergency kept students away from the campus. This contingency was activated in 2020, in response to the COVID-19 pandemic. No changes to content, activities, or assessment was required for the switch from classroom to online delivery. At each workshop, the course convener, Dr. Charles Gretton, sets the context. The instructor, that is me, manages the students, while the subject matter expert, Tempe Archer, delivers the workshop content. Tempe tells me when to put the students into Zoom rooms for group work and bring them back. I relay queries from the students in the chat forum. After a workshop, students complete a small writing task for 1% of their grade and provide peer feedback for another 1%. Then 13 tutors help the 200 students with their portfolios and assess them at the end of semester for 14% of their grade. Universities across the world are now struggling to come up with a post-COVID education strategy. On the one hand online learning has shown education can be provided efficiently anywhere, but there is a desire to provide a personal experience. Thomas L. Friedman explored a similar dilemma in The Lexus and the Olive Tree, Understanding Globalization, 1999. Lexus motor vehicles represented the desire for the products of globalization and the olive tree local tradition. Friedman argued that globalization would win out, but I suggest it is possible to have both. Engineering a car for global standards takes hundreds of specialists' years of work and costs billions of dollars. So Toyota design a common platform for a range of models from low cost to luxury ones. Luxury models are hand finished with some premium components to give a sense of something beyond the ordinary. The approach of an engineered platform with personal touches added can be applied to learning. A course can be created by a team of educational designers and subject matter experts for delivery worldwide to meet formal government and professional standards. The basics of the course can be provided online, with personal touches added by teaching staff, online and face-to-face. -face. This way the student gets the benefit of quality design, plus the human touch. For further information see the Keep Calm and Carry Online webinar post in the highereducationwhisperer.com blog.